introduced the concept of indifference curves, we said that they have a number of properties. At least when we're talking about two economic goods as opposed to economic bads, indifference curves slope downwards, they tend to be bowed into the origin. And one of the other things that we said is that indifference curves are generally parallel or concentric in a way such as what you see here, and specifically that they don't cross. So let's think for a second mathematically about why it doesn't make sense for indifference curves to cross. So you see what I've done here is I just drew a couple of indifference curves that look similar to the indifference curves here with the important distinction that these guys cross. So that we could think about why this doesn't make sense or why this gets us to some contradiction with some of the other assumptions that we've made. So to think about this, what I can do is I can start by labeling actually three points on these indifference curves. The first one I'm going to label, call it point A, is the point of intersection between the two curves. The second point that I'm going to label, let's call it point B, is just a point, it's a randomly chosen point, somewhere on the first indifference curve, which I called IC1. And then point C, Again, picking an arbitrary point, but now I'm picking an arbitrary point that's on the other indifference curve. Here we've called that IC2. Now, we can infer based on what we know about indifference curves. Remember, indifference curves, each one of these curves is a set of points among which the consumer is indifferent. So, for example, this first indifference curve, any single point the consumer, by definition, doesn't care which one of these bundles of goods of X and Y he or she has. So, in other words, in very simple terms, the consumer has to be indifferent between any two points on the same indifference curve. Right? So what that means is that by definition, so we can look at A and B, A and B are on the same indifference curve, indifference curve 1. So it must be true that the consumer is indifferent between A and B. And in economics, some books do this formally and others don't, the indifference operator is just this little tilde or squiggly guy here. So this is how we would write sort of mathematically or in economic terms that we're indifferent between A and B. We could do the same thing and we could notice that points A and C are also on the same indifference curve. So it must be true that the consumer is indifferent between A and C. So easy enough so far. But then if you think about this concept of indifference, you know, if I don't care whether I have an apple and an orange, and I also don't care whether I have an apple or a banana, it stands to reason that I also don't care whether I have an orange or a banana. In mathematics or in economics, we call this the transitive property. And what that means is that if we're indifferent between A and B, and we're indifferent between A and C, it then follows that we should logically or rationally be indifferent between B and C. This is just the mathematical notation for therefore. And we can see here that that's not consistent what we, with what we have in our diagram. Because B was only on indifference curve 1 and not indifference curve 2. And C was only on indifference curve 2 and not on indifference curve 1. So wait a minute, all of a sudden we get a contradiction with our you know, fundamental definition of indifference curves. So as soon as we have indifference curves crossing, we get a nonsensical conclusion. So in order to be consistent with our definition of rationality and our transitivity of indifference, it must be the case that indifference curves don't in fact cross. 